We're back. How are you this week? Did you all take the time to go read in the Gospels about the King lineage? I know you did. And it was so interesting. And it changes your life. This week, we're talking about a whole new story in the Bible. And I can't wait to share it with you. But before we start, let's pray. Let's look up. Let's look down. Dear God, I ask that you bless our children. God, I ask that you bless the children all over the world. I pray, Father God, that all of their needs are met, nothing missing, nothing lacking. As they get ready to approach going back to school, Father God, I pray for knowledge for them, Father. I pray that the same knowledge that you gave in the Bible that you will give our children today. And I pray, Father God, that that knowledge is manifested in their schoolwork. I pray, Father God, that they are above and not beneath in everything that they do. I pray, Father God, for obedience in their life. I pray, Father, for respect for their teachers and all adults. And I pray, Father God, that this school year will be one of the best school years for them. In Jesus' name, amen. What does wisdom look like? Maybe this is the picture that pops into your head. Gray hair, long beard, thick spectacles, all the knowledge. And how about an owl for good measure? Many older people do have wise things to say, but if you wanna be wise, you don't have to wait till your hair turns gray because wisdom can look like you. It's all about finding out what to do and then of course doing it. See, wise people are curious and willing to learn, especially the truth about themselves. Wise people are willing to ask for help. Hey, Aunt Jen, this kid said something mean to me. What should I do? Wise people choose to fill their minds with things that are good and true, so they can choose to speak words that are loving and true. Whether you're five or 75, you can say, God, your wisdom is all that I'm after. I want to grow stronger. I want to dig deeper. And when you find out what you should do and do it, others can see God at work in you. That's why wisdom is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Whenever I need some answers, God, I turn to you. You are my help when I need wisdom. You always see me through. To know that you're chasing after me it makes me want to run to where you are. God, you make this journey worth it. I give you all my heart. When I don't know what to do, you help me. When I don't know what to do, you help me figure it out 
to do you help me figure it out I run to you when I need a solution I have no doubt that I will run to you when I don't know what to do you help me figure it out God I run to you when I need a solution I have no doubt that I will run So in our Bible lesson today, we're talking about renewing our mind. How do we renew our mind? Only through Jesus Christ. When we invite Jesus Christ to be a part of our life, it renews our body, our spirit, and our mind. We don't live the way we used to. We're renewing our minds in a new way. And that's what we're gonna talk about in the Story Lab today. So boys and girls, sit down get comfortable, and get ready to renew your mind as we drive into the Story Lab. Hey, welcome to Story Lab. This week we're taking a look at a story that did not go swimmingly. We'll meet a guy who listened to some bad advice that sunk an entire kingdom. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. All month, we're talking about ways that we can grow in wisdom, just like Jesus did. Is that a challenge? I guess so. Great, because I've got a snack challenge for you. <laughs> oh, thanks. Ah, uh, you need context, my friend. The context is that you just offered me a snack and then took it away. This is a beta snack challenge. Those really colorful fish? Those really colorful predatory fish. Okay, but betas don't eat chocolate. We are the betas. And these are brightly colored insects that we're about to eat. This whole thing seems fishy. We're gonna need uh, these, okay. this, and you get your own. Okay. Uh... We've got 20 seconds to capture as many insects as our fishy little mouths can grab. Okay. Okay. But wait! The plot thickens. Hiding amongst the tasty chocolate prey are poisonous fruity insects. Grab one of these chewy fruit suckers and you're a goner. Oh, okay, so let me get this straight. I'm trying to quickly snap up chocolate candies yeah. while avoiding any chewy fruit flavored candies? Spot on. Got it. We're gonna need to pour these oh, back onto the plate. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Put them all out. Okay. M and M. Oh, these are poisonous. Oh. Yeah, you mix them Watch in. Out, they're uh, 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 can we get a timer? Oh, perfect. All right. <clears throat> okay. Three, two, one. Go, go. Uh, 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 oh, then, uh, is that one red? Okay. okay uh, orange. Yep. Brown. Yellow. Yep. There we go. Two more. Yep. yep. Thank you. You're having a point. Don't take for mine. Okay. All right. That's it. Oh, that's how we go. Okay, okay, let's count. Sixteen. 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 Oh, <laughs> we don't need to worry about the points. What did you notice about our insect snacks? Um, well, we hardly grabbed any red candies at all. And why is that, my fishy friend? Well, we couldn't grab the red fruity candies, so I guess we just avoided all the red. It's like the red chocolates were camouflaged. Give the man a prize. Camouflage is a tactic that sea creatures and other animals use to disguise their appearance and blend in with their surroundings to avoid predators. There are so many sea creatures that use camouflage, like pygmy seahorses hiding in coral. Is there actually a seahorse in there? Also, this leopard flounder and this grumpy frogfish. Truly amazing. Don't octopuses, octopi use camouflage too? Get ready for it. <laughs> octopi or cephalopods have proteins called opsins on their skin. 
The opsins act as color receptors and allow the octopus to change colors to match their environment. You sure that's not some kind of crazy visual effect on the video? It's for real, honest. It's incredible how the octopi just start to look like whatever they're around, which is great for an octopus, but not always good for people. Speaking of which, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we turn to 2 Chronicles, one of the 12 books of history in the Old Testament, beginning with a man named Abraham. God had chosen a special family, the Israelites. Unlike every other nation, the Israelites had no king but God. But the Israelites really wanted a human king, so God gave them one. The first king, Saul, didn't follow God. But King David and later his son Solomon both ruled wisely. Until... Until the end of Solomon's life, when he foolishly turned away from God and failed to pass on his wisdom to his son, Rehoboam. And that's where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. Now before we dive into Rehoboam's story, let's take a closer look at Solomon. When he was a young king, Solomon had asked God for wisdom rather than riches or fame, and God made Solomon one of the wisest men to live. In fact, many of Solomon's wise sayings are collected in the book of Proverbs. Here's one verse from chapter 13. Walk with wise people and become wise. A companion of foolish people suffers harm. Pretty clear, huh? But King Solomon did not teach this wisdom to his son Rehoboam, who became king after Solomon died. But hey, even a young, inexperienced king can learn wisdom by asking wise people for advice. <laughs> right? You think. But here's what actually happened. Solomon had made the Israelites work extremely hard and they were exhausted. So a man named Jeroboam, along with some of the people, came to see King Rehoboam. King Rehoboam, we are so tired. Your father put a heavy load on our shoulders. Yeah, seriously heavy. Couldn't you make our work a little easier? Just a tiny bit? Do that and we'll serve you. Yeah, for reals, we'll be all in. What do you say? Hmm. <sighs> I need to think about this. Come back in three days and I'll give you my answer. First things first, King Rehoboam went to talk with his advisors, experienced wise men who had helped his father in years past. Young King Rehoboam, you should say yes to their request. If you give them what they want, they're sure to give you what you want, loyalty and service. So far so good, right? Walking with the wise, hmm? But Plot twist, King Rehoboam did not stop there. He went to find his own buddies, young foolish guys with zero experience running a kingdom. <laughs> Listen, Ray, you're the man now. <laughs> yeah, don't make that work easier. <laughs> yeah, 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 you should make it harder. Totally, let them know who's in charge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, does that sound very wise to you? Yeah, not so much. But Rehoboam liked the idea of making a show of his power. And when the workers returned three days later, they got their answer. You think my dad, King Solomon, was tough? I got news for you. I'm even tougher. He made you break rocks? Well, I'm gonna make sure the rocks break you. <laughs> <laughs> this sure was not what Jeroboam and the Israelites wanted to hear. They had made a reasonable ask, but Rehoboam was choosing to make things worse for them. That does it. We don't want any part of you and your family anymore. People of Israel, let's go back to our homes. David's royal family, take care of your own kingdom. Yeah, we're out of here. Rehoboam had chosen to listen to the foolish words of his friends rather than the wise words of his experienced advisors. And it led to disaster. From that time forward, the kingdom was split in two parts, Israel and Judah, and the people strayed farther and farther from God. <sighs> the end. I think I speak for Carter when I say, whoa. Yeah, what he says. So much awful stuff that came from hanging out with unwise people. Maybe there can be some good too, if we learn from Rehoboam's mess ups. Oh, for sure. 
I mean, that's part of wisdom, learning from mistakes, whether they're yours or somebody else's. So, what's our part in the story? Well, God wants us to become more like Jesus in everything we do, including our choices. We can grow in wisdom by spending time with people who follow Jesus and make good choices. And wisdom is finding out what the right thing to do is and doing it. Sometimes that means not being too cool to ask your parents or some other wise grown-ups for advice and help. Yeah, and noticing which friends or classmates are choosing wisdom. Good idea. It's important to be friendly and kind to everyone, but you want to spend the most time with your wise friends. You know, I think I'm a little wiser just from hanging out here today with you, Brian. Hey, what about me? Oh, you too, Carter. <laughs> I think you guys got it. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Hang out with wise people. That's why we like hanging out with all of you. <laughs> now, I think it's time to bring the Story Lab in for a landing. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you, See you next, next time. time. Walk with wise people and become wise. A companion of foolish people suffers harm. Walk with wise people and become wise. A companion of foolish people suffers right. harm. So we saw that Paul knew or experienced, excuse me, all about renewing his mind and changing his mindset. Because Paul changed from Paul to Saul. Yes, talking about renewing your mind, he had a major mind renewal going on. And just like Paul, we too can change for so that God shines through us each and every day. Boys and girls, while you're at school this year, make sure that you're living with a renewed mind. You're not playing those same games that you did last year. Your mind is renewed in Christ Jesus and you have a new life. Remember that. I'll see you back later. Bye-bye. I guess I should pray before we leave, right? I said bye and I didn't pray. We all know that we have to pray, right? Thank you, friends. Let's look up, let's look down. Dear God, thank you so much for this word. I thank you for renewing our minds and our spirits and our hearts. I pray, Father God, that every child in school, that they walk the halls with a renewed mind as they start this new school year. And Father, just like you renewed Paul, I pray, Father, that you renew all of our children here at Linked Up and online. And a total transformation takes place in our youth, a God transformation for our youth. And we will thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, everybody. My name is Minister Erica Walker, and I am here to bring you the theme of Connect 40 this week. This week is called Make Disciples. Can anybody raise their hand and tell me how many disciples Jesus had? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11, it's 12. And guess what? Those disciples made other disciples. And then those disciples made other disciples. It goes on and on and on. So that is called evangelism too. Evangelism is a big word, but not just for adults, but for kids too. So as you go out and shine your light at your school and your community's park, go ahead and be a disciple yourself by shining your light on the inside. Our light pushes out the darkness. I look forward to hearing how many disciples you have made today. I'll see you guys next week.